So in this video, we're talking about how long does it take to put on muscle mass naturally? And I think that a lot of people, because there's so much in the way of Hollywood actors and people on social media who put on ridiculous amounts of muscle in really small periods of time, there's this expectation that if you start working out, that you're going to put muscle on really quickly and keep on putting on muscle really quickly. And it doesn't really work that way. In fact, I think that more people would keep on training if they had a realistic expectation and understanding of just how long and incremental muscle building is if you're doing it naturally. So stay tuned and we'll talk more about this. So in this video, we're talking about how long does it take to put on muscle mass? And before I go any further, let's thank everyone for tuning in. We've had so much tremendous support for this channel. And I'd like to thank everyone who's tuning in and do be sure to like and subscribe and also hit that bell as well to be first in line to get the new content that we're putting out on a regular basis. So without any further ado, let's get going. How long does it take to put on muscle naturally? Now, I'm going to preface this by saying, as I mentioned earlier, that in the movies, we tend to see a lot of actors and sometimes actresses make remarkable muscle gains in very short periods of time. Uh, you could have someone getting ready for a movie and all of a sudden they go from looking like, you know, normal people with average body fat levels to all of a sudden having deeply etched abs, bulging biceps, bulging pecs. And you might notice, in fact, you will notice if you look at a lot of the Hollywood actors that when they tend to be that kind of rapid transformation, they don't necessarily get bigger legs. But the bottom line is, and I'm going to be very honest with you, most Hollywood actors getting ready for parts where they have to make radical changes in their body, use drugs. They use some form of steroid, they use some form of testosterone, and yes, you'll see them on the, you know, the show is promoting their movies, talking about how much chicken breast they ate and that they trained, you know, every single day and they worked out twice a day, all sorts of nonsense trying to justify, you know, this remarkable, um, change in what they look like over a very short period of time. And to put it in perspective, a top natural bodybuilder, the best natural bodybuilders that I have ever seen, who have ever lived to look like some of the Hollywood actors in the movies have trained anywhere from three to five sometimes even 10 years to attain the look that some of the Hollywood actors are able to do within a period much shorter than a year. And it takes even longer to build muscle and lose body fat to have that look. Because if you think about what a Hollywood actor tends to do, they're not just building muscle, they're building muscle and they're getting more defined at the same time. Now, naturally that can happen, but it takes years, years and years. I started off at 125 pounds at six feet tall when I first walked into a gym. And I would probably say that I've been at my biggest at a lean and cut 200 and maybe 207 pounds. Now. To be able to go from 125 pounds to 207 pounds took about 15 years. And we're not talking about 15 years of kind of training. We're talking about 15 years of dedicating my life to being the best possible natural bodybuilder I could ever be. 
And if you look at someone who is, let's say an actor, they're not dedicating their lives to being the best bodybuilder ever. And it's kind of strange that a regular person could somehow or the other suddenly look better than some of the top natural bodybuilders on the planet in a very short period of time, which is why there's no way that we should be even try to justify it. And I think that it's important that we point it out because it creates unrealistic expectations, very unrealistic expectations. People go to the gym, they start working out and everyone who starts working out is going to have an initial increase of muscle that's going to be really fast. If you start working out within the first six to 10 weeks, you're going to have a really big change because muscle mass increase is your body trying to do everything to adapt to what you're doing. So if you go to the gym and you're training intensely enough, even if you're not training that intensely, you're just starting off, your body is going to react to the fact that you're doing something different. And then it slows down, really slows down. And it all makes sense if you understand the mechanism behind it. So if you stress your muscles with a stimulus that is one that it's unaccustomed to, or one that creates a degree of overload, meaning that the muscles are doing more work than it normally does, there's going to be an adaptation. And that adaptation is going to allow you to perform whatever activity you're doing better and more efficiently. So if you're doing an activity that involves lifting and requires strength, your body adapts by increasing protein synthesis to increase the cross-sectional area of the contractile proteins that make up your muscle. Now, the more contractile proteins you have in your muscles, the larger the cross-sectional area, the bigger it is. The larger the cross-sectional area is, when that muscle contracts, the more force it can generate. That's how muscles in one way, one major way, get stronger. It's called hypertrophy. Now, the more contractile proteins you have, the harder it becomes to put on more contractile proteins and make those proteins bigger because we have a limit to how much muscle we can put on. Now, again, we talked about adaptation. In our evolutionary past, we had to adapt to do certain things, but those things are survival based. Now, once your body has increased protein to adapt for the activity it's doing, it's going to stop. It has no more reason to keep on growing, which is why most people after that initial growth, if they don't change their routines, they're going to see that their progress is going to slow down. And if they keep on doing the same thing, they don't change up the weights, change up the exercises, there's not going to be any difference because your body's going to say, well, we've already adapted to be able to do this particular exercise, particular activity. So we're good. Now, as you go along, you have to keep on overloading the muscles which can happen by either increasing the weight that you're using, which has some limitations or which is perhaps the most efficient way to do it and safest way to do it by continually increasing the intensity and by varying the exercise that you're doing. And it becomes more complicated because the more you do, the more your body adapts and the more your body adapts, the more your body starts slowing down any potential increase because your body again, does not want to do anything more than it has to do in order to be efficient, in order to survive. And the problem is that muscle mass is metabolically costly because when it comes to how many calories your body needs to maintain a pound of muscle, it's a lot. In fact, your body uses the most amount of calories trying to maintain your muscle mass, which is why if you're trying to lose body fat, it's really important to build as much muscle mass as possible because the more muscle you have, the faster your metabolism and more calories you burn. Sounds like a really great thing for weight loss. But remember, we come from a survival based environment. And if a human being was to keep on putting on more and more muscle in order to do something to survive, it means that human being would also have to keep on increasing their energy intake and be eating more food 
which kind of stops, which is why we have something called myostatin. And myostatin is a gene within us that stops us from building muscle past a certain point because our body's going to stop and say, okay, we've built enough muscle. We don't need to go any further because past a certain point, it's diminishing returns. You're going to get to a point where it requires so much resources for you to survive in a natural environment where we came from, that just wouldn't make sense. So we're not biologically designed to be bigger than a certain size. And anyone who magically gets to that particular size tends to be on steroids because there's only so much you can do. Most people, if they do everything right, eat perfectly, it's going to take them from point A to point B about five years to start looking like they're getting there. Now that sounds like a really long time, but that's how long it takes. Those who are genetically gifted can do it within the course of sometimes two to three years, but even they need two to three years. When most people talk, talk about how much bustle and how long it's going to take them to build bustle, they're talking about building muscle and looking lean. And it's not that easy to do because you're kind of going in two directions. You're trying to number one, build muscle and number two, minimize your body fat to a point where you can see all those muscles really, really clearly. And to do that requires a uh, real attention to your diet. Now, that being said, your body will do everything possible to resist it. Now, the closer you get to a lower body fat, the more your body stops and doesn't want to go any further. So it's really hard as most of us know to lose those last couple of pounds to look really, really lean. Add on to that, the fact that there's always so much muscle you can put on and the more muscle you put on, the more you have to do and the longer it's going to take before you put more muscle on because your body doesn't want to put on too much muscle and your body is a very conservative machine. Taking all that into account kind of puts in perspective a natural bodybuilder's dilemma. And it also puts in perspective why most people who need to get ready for a movie or a photo shoot really quickly tend to use drugs because it's really, really hard. The problem with protein synthesis is that there's only so much can happen every day. You could only increase by this microscopic amount under the best of circumstances. If your diet is perfect, if your training is perfect. And then there's a point where if you do everything perfectly, it's going to stop. You're not going to be able to put on the same amount of muscle if you're training your entire life in your early teens and your twenties, as you will continuously in your forties and fifties. And I think it's important that instead of looking at other people and thinking about how long it's going to take, it's important to focus on your own journey and make it a journey, make it a spiritual journey, make it a drug-free journey, make it a journey where it's about appreciating the fact that what you're doing is going to make you healthier, going to make you stronger, to make you better at doing everything that you do in life, not just the physical things like carrying the groceries, but because you're going to the gym, because you're pushing yourself further than you normally do and really going to the limit, you're teaching yourself how to go through difficult things. Those are absolutely important spiritual lessons that you're going through. Don't disregard their importance. Focus on them. When you focus on those things, you start enjoying them. They start becoming part of your life. And time flies when you're having fun, as they say. And pretty soon you look in the mirror and you realize that that time has passed and you're trying to look more and more like where you want to be. And you put on the muscle you want to put on and you have that body you want to have. I hope this video helps you on your path and helps you also understand just how long it can take for you to build muscle naturally, but doesn't discourage you, but encourages you because the important thing is you can do it. Do the course and Excelsior.